Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Like I said earlier, we're talking about politics and security. And it's about two governors in Nigeria locking horns over this very important issue about banditry and security in Nigeria. The governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, and the governor of Bauchi State, uh, Mohammed, uh, Bala, Mohammed. Bala Mohammed, is, you know, they're basically disagreeing on how the government should tackle this issue. The People's Democratic Party has stepped into this, asking for calm, and we've invited uh, the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Dero Odeyemi, uh, who joins us via Zoom to discuss this. Good morning, Mr. Odeyemi. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity. Yes, and we also have Mr. Chris Wokobia here, still with us. Thanks for staying here. My pleasure. Okay, beginning with this issue, we see that uh, they're, they're having different or conflicting views about how this matter should be tackled. And uh, Bala Mohammed of Bauchi State came out to say that, you know, bandits should be allowed to carry AK-47. But later said AK-47 when he said it was metaphoric. And we see here Autumn, you know, thinking otherwise. And he came out to say that Bala Mohammed's statement made him sound like a terrorist. Can you help us break down this rift, this difference of opinion in the PDP regarding how to handle this issue of security? Mr. Odeyemi. Uh, this is more or less a very difficult situation to handle. Um, for the mere fact that it is coming from two high profile governments makes it more difficult. Having said that, I want to believe that it is very wrong and it is not too good if governors who could settle whatever misgivings or misunderstanding among them on the pages of newspaper or on television for Nigeria to see. It is a defacement of the office that they are put up by. This is condemnable. But having said that, we as a political party wants to agree that there is always this mechanism to sort out issues and to settle it amicably. And in doing that, what we did as a political party is just to analyze the issue. If the two governors condemn banditry, if they believe that there should be peace in this country, and if they believe that security of life and property is the first concern of a responsible government, I think they should both agree on the way out of it. Uh, what uh, I want to believe uh, Governor Bala Mohammed is saying is that full of this should not be stigmatized. That in providing them, it will be wrong to say it is only full of this that all the rest men that are committing crime or killing people in Nigeria. That is his position. And he has come out to say that the advice that the Shukari AK-47 was a kind of a figurative use of word. Well, we want to believe that. And then for Samuel to say that full, criminal full and needs are not encouraged or are not allowed in the states. He said the obvious is only protecting his people. And he has every right to say that. So, as a party, we have looked into the issues and we have used our internal mechanism to talk to the two of them. And I think right. we both understand the situation that the security of life of uh, Nigerians are more important than whatever argument they are putting up. All right. Mr. Odeyemi, away from the differing views of the two governors, what's the stance of the PDP regarding this matter? We condemn anything that will not give security to Nigeria. We stand against any Fulani or anybody in this country that portrays himself as a terrorist. We, as a party, we stand against anything that will not bring peace into this country. Mr. Odeyemi, I'm asking for, yes. Mr. Odeyemi, excuse me, please. I'm asking for specifics. 
because both Bala Mohammed and uh, Samuel Autumn say they're against, you know, criminality. But Autumn is saying he's, he's supporting ranching, while uh, Bala Mohammed is saying that, you know, they should resort to self-help and take up arms. So in terms of specific details, what's the PDP saying about this? The PDP has come out to say that as a responsible political party, we are committed to peace of an average of every Nigerian. So what has the Kuwait have said that this? That also said it in a different way, or Bala Mohammed is saying is oh, we cannot come out to the public and say one is guilty, the other one is right. But as a party, we have dealt with it internally. I think we both understand All we right. need to work together okay. or to speak with one voice. Okay. And that is to condemn criminality. Thank you, Mr. Odeyemi. I'm going to go to uh, Chris Wonkobia now. There's, uh, of course, talk of uh, the party's internal reconciliatory mechanism and all of that. Um, but what's your thoughts on party ideology um, versus, you know, the, you know, the stance of, you know, individual governors? And what does this really say about the ideologies of political parties in Nigeria and how much that influences the narratives of their governors? Did you say ideology of political parties in Nigeria? <laughs> yes, I... the ideologies of political parties. Really? I'm yet to find out um, what the ideologies of the major political parties in Nigeria are. And I'm yet to find out what really is the difference between the major political parties. But let me say clearly that I align with the argument or the, or the position of the deputies uh, spokesperson of the PDP when he said that uh, both governors should resolve their problems um, like governors. It's sad when you see fathers dance naked in the public space. And I say this deeply. Uh, it is sad when you have the Nigerian Governors Forum and you have two major governors dancing naked in the public square. I I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility, that it is not good for the people of Benue State, as well as the people of Bauchi State. These two governors should cover their faces in shame. I say that for two reasons. The man who said that AK-47 AK um, can, should be used as, uh, or construed as a figurative speech for self-defense, has come out at several fora to impliedly say, oh, I'm, I was wrong. I was quoted wrongly. Um, but for saying, clearly saying sorry, he has severally said that anybody who wields a weapon that is not licensed should be taken in by the police. I've heard him say that on several sister stations. So I don't know whether uh, the governor of Benue State wants him to kneel down in the public space to say, oh, I'm sorry, or Tom, that I made a mistake. And then the way the governor of Benue State is pushing it and talking about threat to his life and saying that if anything happens to his life, uh, the governor of Bauchi State should be held responsible, I think is reprehensible. What is important at this point in this country is that we must all understand that should this country go up in flames, West Africa and Indian Africa cannot take refugees from a country of over 200 million people. So we must be careful what we, what embassies we fan. Mm. We must remove these issues of insecurity away from partisanship. And we must do the best we can to stop profiling criminals. I agree with, and I align strongly with the former boss of... Um, what commission was that? The Usman, who said he's Fulani. And he understands that largely those who are exacerbating this conflict between headers and farmers are Fulanis. That he understands that his people must learn that where your liberties stop, others begin. And that he thinks that the general Fulani people will have to talk to their, their, their brothers and sisters 
it made them understand that Nigeria is an amalgam of several people and several tendencies. I think that's the way to go. Like I said, the time to use the NOA and several agencies of government effectively in building, uh, and if you like, de-escalating the conflict in this country is now. Whilst we tinker with issues about restructuring and addressing the fundamental inequities and inequalities right. that, that litter the Nigerian space. Okay, uh, Mr. Odeyemi, I'm, I'm bringing you in here. Um, our guest in studio here, Chris Wonkovia, doesn't agree very much in the ideology or the existence of an ideology of um, political parties in Nigeria. Um, would you, you know, say that you know he might be right? The PDP may not have a strong ideology that should um, have stepped in here or you know have been relevant in this situation. Odeyemi knows that it's uh, Siamese twins. <laughs> uh, the PDP <laughs> and the APC are Siamese twins. He knows. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, <laughs> the, 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 it means that they both might have the same ideology. <laughs> yes, I understand. We really need to try to be truth because uh, we are talking of politics in Nigeria. It is Nigerians that are the operators. And uh, we agree with me on the way that the point of view is that we have a political parties who are being formed. We had your people who wrote constitution for AG and immediately moved to another party to repeat exactly what they wrote for AD as a constitution. And if you are looking at ideology, I think you will better look at the operators than not the ideology. What will you call the identity of somebody who slept as a PDP person yesterday and woke up to become APC today? And the APC are celebrating such person simply because they believe he has added to the number they have. You're, so where is the ideology? Yes. As far as we are concerned in this country, you cannot think that a political party to have an ideology other than the operators and the individuals who are there. So I agree. But so, that is not to say that with the combination of right people coming together to form a political party or to form an alliance within a political party, there will not be an So, so what you have said... Uh, apologies, Dr. Felix. So what you're saying, Mr. Adoyemi, is that your political party, you're the uh, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, you're saying that your political party doesn't have, you know, an ideology that Nigerians should cling to. You know, they are basically I just... I have not said that. I have not said that. And don't try to, don't try to dispose. <laughs> we have an ideology. And the ideology is that all Nigerians must be free. The ideology is that we must provide food for all Nigerians we must protect them. And we must provide governance that makes them need to be inclusive okay. and give them happiness. Well, and I think that is an ideology. <laughs> we've, we've had okay. repeated Fair conversations enough. about this political ideology issue. I mean, I remember asking, uh, I don't know if it's you or somebody from the APC, about the same issue and mm. uh, the, the results, you know, the, the, the smiles on our faces that we can see here was what we had at that time. But bringing it back to this issue about security and the dif different thoughts that the different governors have, what should be priority? What should come first? Should it, be, should it be loyalty to your people and their security or loyalty to the party and their ideology? Of course, security comes first. To who? Because we are all, security comes first. And we are all in this country together. In as much as we are not going to play the Andrew that wants to be checked out of the country, the issue of security concerns everybody respective of religion or political party. And that is where PDP stands, and that is the cornerstone of our the ideology that we wish to say that we wish to say to Nigeria in 2023. And these Nigerians have seen the difference. If you accept that the issue of Boko Haram was paramount to why uh, President Jonathan was voted down, what will you now say about PPC and the security situation in the country? There have been more deaths. There has been more criminalities than when PDP would in 16 years. Hmm. Well, it's not a death of Okay, Olympics, okay. Uh, Mr. 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 Odeyemi, yes, I wanted to ask yes. you uh, this question, because you mentioned earlier that, you know, the PDP had gotten involved. They were trying to settle the rift between Autumn and Bala Mohammed. How far has this intervention gotten? Because we're seeing on the national newspapers this morning that uh, Bala Mohammed is challenging uh, Samuel Autumn, saying, prove I'm not a terrorist. So how far is this 
you know, dialogue or this, you know, reconciliation? reconciliation. How far has it gone? We want, we want to believe that uh, we have done our best as a party. And if there is anything being uh, said about uh, any of the governments, we want to believe that it's just to clear issues. But that is not to say that as a party, we have not stepped in. We have stepped in, we have talked to the two of them, and we believe as mature and people responsible for governance in this country, they should listen to the party and stop this public authorities that can cause more confusion to people. All right, okay. um, Chris Walker, you wanted to say... Uh, Let me say clearly uh, please. that I think that now is the time for the Nigerian Governors Forum, um, Kyle Defiame and his colleagues, to step in and de-escalate, uh, if you like, this conflict between the two governors. Uh, now is the time to remove issues of national security from politics politics and partisanship. Now is the time to put counter first and address fundamental issues of statehood and nationhood. I say this advisedly. The man who is angry in the southeast is angry because there is injustice in Nigeria. The man who is angry in the south-south is angry because his resources have been managed by people who appear not to care about him and his space. The one who's angry in the Southwest is angry because for so long he's called for rotation, he's called for resource control, and he has called for equity, and nobody seems to be heeding his call. The one who's angry in the North Central is saying that I want to control my mineral resources and pay tax to the center. Nobody seems to be listening. The one who's angry in the Northwest is saying that I'm a bandit because for almost 60 years, the Nigerian estate has not cared about me. My children and I have been a Marjorie's, loafers and headers on the streets. The one in Bonu and the Northeast is saying that my life doesn't seem to matter. So this country must address the fundamental issues of nationhood and statehood. Save and accept that is done if we preach here for 365 days non-stop. It won't change anything. I think that the fundamentals are simply, this government must come down from its high horse and engage with her citizens. Right. Yes, I think, I think that's the much we can take at this time for this conversation. Um, yeah, I yes. guess so. So thank you very much, Mr. Chris Wokobia uh, of a Country First Movement. I won't forget that. Thank you very much. And thank Good. you very much, Mr. Dero Odeyemi of uh, the People's Democratic Party. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, loved every angle that we were able to um, uh, look into this morning. Uh, there's still so much that needs to be spoken about as a continuous conversation, and it may, it may never just end. Um, until we see results. And so we're always going to be here to share these thoughts with you and, of course, to unravel and to un, you know, unpack you know, these uh, big conversations every morning here on The Breakfast. If you missed out on any of it, quickly join us on social media at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. Always um, have um, you know, details and, of course, clips of these conversations for you. Yes, so yes, that's so much we can take. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. My name is Aneta Felix saying have a beautiful day. And I am Usaogi Ogbon. The news comes up at 9 a.m.